Okay, so here I am back at the beach where I do my beach combing. This is where I park. I gotta cross this street. There's the ferry terminal up there. I gotta cross this street with my chainsaw. It's cold out, it's raining, and I'm mental. Okay, let's just leave it at that. Is this my lighter? Yeah, it's my lighter. I dropped my lighter. Okay, so anyways. I gotta cross the street, take my chainsaw over there, go cut a log, there's a nice little cedar log I want to get down there, go gotta cut a log, bring my chainsaw back, then bring the log back, okay? So yeah, there's my chainsaws. I'm mental guys, it's, it's just not right. It's called, like I've said in one of my other videos, it's called Acquired Savant. I can't stop. I have a mental problem that it's time to see a psychiatrist. But whatever, let's get the saw out and let's get down there and cut that piece of cedar. Chainsaw on hand. Yeah, it is cold today and it, you can't see it, but it is raining. So let's see how far I have to walk down to find the uh, that cedar log. How far I'll have to carry it. It's a mental illness, guys. I just can't stop. I should be at home today. Nice, warm, relaxing. I'm supposed to be taking a few days off carving, but that's not the case. And the log has to be way down here. So this is how far I have to carry it back. But I'm not taking a big piece of it. I'm gonna be making another one of those uh, burning carvings. I wanna do a blue one. I don't know if the blue's the right color. It's gonna be a wood spirit, but I wanna do a blue and green one. I don't know, I don't care if it doesn't turn out. I just wanna do it. And where the hell is that log? Hopefully it didn't wash away. Okay, well, I'm gonna find this log here. Okay, here it is, found it. It's a lot smaller than I thought it was, but uh, it's cedar, all right. So what I'm gonna do, you can see the size. So like it's uh, three quarters of a foot thick. So I'm gonna take this piece here. Okay, so I'll cut it with the saw and get her, get her done. It's not too bad because I parked right there. So I walked all that reason. I'm freezing cold here. Freezing cold, yep. Okay, and of course me. I can't just take one little log home. I'm gonna take half of it home. Why? Because, well, geez, I don't have enough cedar at the place. So off to the chainsaw carving area I go, turn my heater on. Just pissing. That's all. Hey, Jordy, look at the cedar log you got here. Oh, look at the cedar logs you got here too. But nope, you gotta go down to the beach and go, you gotta get more, don't you? You just need to. Okay guys, so I got this, a piece of the cedar that I wanna cut up, it's on my uh, jaw horse, okay? Um, this isn't gonna be a chainsaw carving video, it's just gonna be, um, I wanna blast this off pretty quick, okay? So this is gonna be a talk through video once I stop talking on here, and once I, I'll carve it, if you guys want to learn how to carve a wood spirit like how I do, you can just go to uh, my playlist and you can see a full tutorial how to carve wood spirits. Same theory goes for chainsaw carving guys or Dremel or Fordham carvings or whatever, rotary carvings. But I'll tell you one thing, when I'm doing this chainsaw carving here, I got my, my steel toes, shoes on, boots, chainsaw pants, I got leather gloves, I got eye protection, I got ear protection, okay? I can even wear a face shield. So this tree here, this is the bottom little piece that I cut off. Okay, so let's go over this. This tree, believe it or not, I counted those rings in there. When you count those rings, that's how old you can tell the tree is, okay? Each one of those rings is a year of the tree's life. So two things I wanna go over. This little cedar tree, it's basically the, bo that's basically the bottom of the tree. It's not very big. Look at my hand comparison. 
So this tree, I've counted the rings and it's about 90 years old from all these rings. They get really tight in here. Okay, so there's two different colors of wood on this tree. You got the outer wood and you got the center wood. This this would be the, I don't know, what's that? Pith? I don't, know, I don't know the terms, guys. I forget shit all the time. So this is the center wood, okay? The dark stuff here. And this is the water wood. I think the center is called the pith. Or this is called pith wood. I don't know. Don't hold me on it, guys. But you can see when I'm going to burn this, you got really light wood and then you got dark wood, okay? The first wood that's known for rotting on the cedar is this outer wood, the water wood. The water wood. But this stuff is solid okay so I'm gonna carve out this wood spirit with my chainsaw I'm running my uh, 193 rear handle with a little pruning bar on there I'm just gonna block it out quickly with my chainsaw and then um, the rest of it is gonna be uh, talked through okay so yeah oh yeah Jordy no you don't have any cedar you got another piece here anybody say what kind of wood this is if you haven't watched my other videos Very dense wood, this stuff. Two pieces right there. Okay, anyways. Oh shoot, okay, so I remember when I, I wanna say one more thing. I remember when I was driving here, I said, should I just carve like a basic face with no beard on this piece and just leave it very basic? And Because it's gonna be another, I'm gonna carve it and I'm gonna stain it. I wanna do green and blue. I'm not sure though. I'm not 100% on it. So should I just do like a face, like a nose coming out of the wood and stuff? But no, I wanna carve this whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to carve the face, it's going to have hair, and it's going to be twisting this way. Okay, so the wind whoosh, is going to be blowing everything this way, and then the beard is going to be wrapping around, okay? Same with the hair, that hair is going to wrap around up top here, because in that way I can get some nice light carves in there, and it will give you the different grains of the wood. Pete, my buddy Pete's requested I do this, but I know he was talking about a bigger log. I think Pete, weren't you? Talking about a bigger log, splitting a big log like this. Well, you get the real wide grain in there. You guys can't see it, but this has real wide grain. And then you'll get the real effects. So I'll be doing one of those big logs later on, but I'm just going to do this little one for now. So this whole thing's going to be carved. Face blowing in the wind, everything's going this way, and everything's twisting around, and the hair is going to be twisting around too. You ask me, what are you making, Jordy? What are you making? What is that? What is it? I don't know what it is. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't know. It's a wood spirit on a windy day. Hey guys, these are the tools I'm using. using. Here's a cut saw shaping disc on a Bosch grinder. Very dangerous tool, guys. This is a knockoff Dremel tool with a quarter inch, uh, sorry, one eighth cut saw extreme. And this is your die grinder with the quarter inch bit in there. Once again, cuts all extreme flame burr. Just go to the, follow the link below, go to the cuts all, use the code CFUSION, save yourself 5%. Okay, I had a thought when I was working on this. I, car I shaped it all out with this, uh, I said I was gonna do a talk through, but whatever, it is what it is. I said, I shaped it all out with my die grinder and this, um, I like this die grinder because it doesn't have too much power. It can bounce, so wear your gloves and this cuts all bit, okay? Like I said, the extreme. So, I had a big thought when I was doing it. I remember burning this white wood, like the water wood, because it's wetter wood is a lot harder to burn than the heartwood like the hardwood inside see the color differences this white wood may be sometimes not all the time may be a lot harder to burn than this hardwood in the center well it's not hard it's this is cedar guys okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go around and i'm going to do some detailing i'm going to cut out the eyes not with this one with a different one of the slimmer one I'm going to cut out these eyes, cut in the nostrils, and start, I'm going to give his hair, hair, 
the detail with the smaller bit and the beard and the mustache will be the bigger cuts all bit okay you know I want to try to avoid using this as much as I can because that's the danger tool and this is only for experienced people guys if you know how if you're good with a grinder okay so let me just keep at it okay so I got all the detail cut in for now I'm gonna torch this whole thing first I'm gonna torch the hell out of it I'm gonna lose lots of these lines okay when you torch it I'm gonna lose lots of these lines just there'll be little bumps there so and after I'm done torching it then I'll come back carve the eyes out because there's no sense carving the eyes in right now because you'll carve away all the detail when you carve the eyes in you'll burn away all the detail in my opinion guys okay so I don't know it is what it is as long as you're having a good time this is a full 360 I usually just do wall hangers or one-sided pieces but this one's gonna be a whole 360 piece I don't know it looks like a turban on his head back there but that's just to say you blend everything all in together kinda I guess <laughs> okay so now I'm gonna torch the hell out of this and I brought my uh, some guys say you don't use this stuff it's too hot but that's what I'm using I'm using this stuff because I want to torch this fast it's getting dark I'm gonna be working into this piece into the into the night I'm calling this piece you know what this piece is being called into the night on a stormy night hey guys this part I was talking when I had the torch going and the torch is super uh, loud kind of on the camera so I just thought I'd do a little talk through here the um, I did I was unsure of this this piece was gonna work or not because it was such tight grain for cedar so that's basically what I'm talking about when I'm doing this torching here just uh, unsure if it's gonna work but you can kind of see the grain right there I don't know okay so that's all I was really saying trying to show you can see it there the grain you guys look there you can see it's all cracked that's because it's somewhat wet wood it's not it's not it's, this wood is seasoned but it's still wet that's what you get when you don't use kiln dried wood i don't care no big deal move forward Guys get hot coals like this and you're worried about it burning all your detail just have a water bottle that's all okay so I wrote a few notes down here because I forget things and it's better for me to write things down I remember so look at the crack okay so this crack could have happened for a few reasons the wood could have cracked because I use that gas that's a lot hotter than propane okay that's one reason it could have cracked it could have cracked because the wood was still damp and when you torch it it needs to dry when it's drying when you're torching it obviously it needs room to move it shrinks so when it shrinks it cracks okay so better to use kiln dried wood yeah I think so also I'm not too sure how this outside the whiter wood is gonna take the grain when I when I when I clean it up I'm not too sure if it's strong enough wood than the heartwood so I'm not too sure if it's gonna hold hard edges of grain by this I just don't know I can't tell yet till I clean it up okay so maybe another opinion is use heartwood get rid of that white wood on the outside if you got if your wood has that and do the heartwood that's we're unsure of that yet okay and my last opinion a hundred percent and Pete will agree with me on this is use wider grain stuff okay you know what I mean this is real tight grain cedar but use harder grain uh, wider that tight grain means like that use the grain that's wider okay because then you're gonna get more effects so this is gonna be a tight piece you can see the grain in here okay you can see the different shapes of the grain in this bird char 
So one more thing I want to say too. This part doing this is a very, very dirty job. If you don't want to do a dirty job, don't do this. Because, like I said, it's very dirty. Look at the cracks along here too. See where it was cracked there? I put the torch in there and burnt so it's all black inside there. Who knows, the cracks might give it character. When I first started carving, there's no way, I'm like, ah, oh, it's cracked, it's garbage. You guys, sometimes the cracks add character, okay? Don't stress too much about cracks in your wood. And the best, do you know what the most positive part of this video and this carving, do you know what the most positive thing of it is? I got this piece of wood for free. I got nothing to lose. The only thing I'm gonna lose is my time. Time's valuable. But guess what, guys? This is a learning process. This guy looks like Albert Einstein, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm gonna use like I showed my last video. This is a nylon, I got three sets. I don't know where the gray one is. You got this one, it's nylon wires, okay? The gray one's the hardest in my opinion. This one's the second hardest. They just go on a normal drill. And this one is, the brushes are smaller so it's not that hard. And when you guys use this, try and go along with the grain because you'll get little marks. I don't care enough about that. Okay, so just let me show you. I don't have my mask. I'm just gonna do a quick hit with it. And you guys will see, this is a dust, this is a dirty part of the job. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that water wood, that water wood holds the green boy. Oh yeah, okay, let, let's get her done. Yo! Yeah. Okay, it's just starting to get dark here. Got my saws loaded up, got a nice clean spot for this piece. To take it back to the laboratory. Here it is guys, you ready for a good time? Yeah, look at that color in there. Look at that, guys. That's from that white wood. Look at the cracks don't even matter anymore, do they? Give it character. So I'm gonna take it back and hit it with my flap sander. My little, I'm gonna use like 400 grit or something, really soft stuff, fine grit, and uh, try and get some more highlights out of this before I put color onto it. I don't even need to color this piece. I don't. And I might not. Look how shiny it already is. That's just from that bristle brush, guys, but I'm dirty. Let's see if I can uh, show you how dirty I am. So let's give you the full look of it before I take it back to the uh, to my place. Yeah, these are really bumpy lines. I can totally feel bumps. I don't know if you guys will be able to, but can you see them there? It's like a ripple effect. I didn't do the back as much as I did the front because, well, it's a back piece. And then you got little spots in the wood, like little bug holes that, I don't know, you can't do nothing about. And you get little chips like this. Yeah, that, look, example, that's a bug hole. That would be in that white wood. They say cedars, uh, what, it's a bug detour, like bugs won't go in cedar, but I think they go in the white wood and in the bark because I've seen it. Yeah, look, those are bug holes. So this is still the white wood on the water wood on the outside, but I'm, I've never seen them inside the center, the center wood. Okay, so take it back to place, see what happens, see if I want to put any color in it or not. Well guys, at this stage of the game, sometimes I think you just need some uh, chicken McNuggets and some hot mustard sauce. Oh yeah, let's try some barbecue here too. Hey Lee, Lee, you just like me for my food and steal my warmth, right? So guys, At this point, 
Look how bright colors are in there. At this point, I gotta decide what colors I'm gonna use. What color? I said blue. I still gotta take my little flop sounder and clean up in here. I said blue at first. This guy kinda looks like Zeus. Maybe, maybe I could make him the water spirit. I don't know. I'll just have to eat my McNuggets and decide. I'm telling you right now, it does not look friggin' cool. Sure looks a lot brighter once I got it in here too. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Who cares about the cracks? Who gives a crap? Three amigos! Okay. So here I got this spinning tray thing now. Okay, this is a piece of wood from Thailand. I don't know, I paid 20 bucks for this thing. I'm sure you can make them yourself for cheaper. So here's the color. It's a lot brighter in here now, you can really see it. It's all face green. Okay, so what I'm, I got this blue dye here. It looks kind of purple right now, but this is blue. What's it called? It is called, uh, Bright blue. I'll uh, and anline whatever it's called. I don't know. Whatever. Bright blue. So I'm gonna mix this in warm water. I'm not gonna use too much color, guys. I just want this to be a little bit blue. I might try and um once again Pete says it's called wash. I might get some dollar store white paint, mix it up with some water, and uh, try and do some white highlights so it looks kind of like more like water. But let's just see how the blue goes. I gotta mix this up. They say to leave this soaking in warm water for 20 minutes so the pigments can absorb into the water and do it properly. I don't know. Okay, so um, let me uh, get this all set up. So guys, I'm in Canada, so I bought this dye at uh, Lee Valley. I think it was like 15 bucks. But that's all the dye that I'm gonna put in the water. Just that little bit of melt. I'm gonna start really light first. Okay, so this dye I got a blue color here, and I got a green color here. I'm not too sure. So, oh jeez, I don't know, these things, uh, I don't know. So anyways, let me just put some of this blue on. It's really faint blue too, so I don't think I'm gonna mix any green color in here. I think I'm just gonna do the whole thing blue. It's just kind of, actually this blue is almost a green color too. Ah, screw it, let's just mix some green in here too. Let's mix her up. You probably won't even be able to tell the two different colors because I mix the dye really thin. Okay, so let me get this done and then uh, I'm just going to keep doing blue, green, blue, green. Let's do his face blue because he's supposed to be the water man. You know, you can always come, like, like uh, Pete says, he does uses lots of dyes for his wood turnings and stuff like that. You can always come back and do it again, right? You can go over it again. That's the good thing about dyes. So let me get this done and then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Okay guys, so I used the blue and green colors. I just mixed them up. What's that color that they make? It's my favorite color. This thing went really dark, but I love it. I've always liked darker pieces anyways, but look at those colors. It looks like a reflection. It looks like that abalone shell. <clears throat> That's what it looks like. But anyways, here, hold on. Let me go get a piece of that abalone shell. Okay, here's the abalone shell. See the colors in there? So this thing still went, I just finished it blue and green. Look at those colors in there. It's just wild. Like I said, this thing's gone pretty dark, but it doesn't matter, I don't care, I love it.
This hair looks actually looks like hair. This is the water man. So this thing will dry and then I'll film again once it's dry because then it looks still, it still looks sharp right now. But once it dries, it looks dull, it looks flat. So I am going to lacquer this. I'm going to get a matte color. The same with the yellow one that I did. See the crack this dad's character, guys. I don't care. It says it's wood, right? So I took a chance on this one. It's gone pretty dark. But I don't care, I like dark, darker pieces anyways. So I just had to put my hand there to block that light. So let me see if I can let it dry here, see how long it takes, and then maybe I'll add it to the end of the video. But look at those colors in here. Love it, just love it. You guys don't forget about the live feed on uh, live chat on uh, Thursday nights at five o'clock Pacific time. Love to see you guys there. Uh, maybe I'll have this one. And I'll have it lacquered by tomorrow if it's dry, and I'll show you guys this and the yellow one on. Uh, I'll show you all three. Okay, guys. Here's the very first one I did. <coughs> Excuse me. When I woke up the next morning, the whole thing was orange because. The yellow and red just made it, the whole thing was orange. Okay? So I re-dyed it red. Red's my favorite color, red and black. So there's the first one. I sanded it and then just dyed the uh, nose and some parts of it yellow. There's the first one I did. What's going on with my freaking phone? Here's the second one I did yesterday. Look how the yellow really popped, guys. When you sand sand more and get brighter colors you'll get that effect like I did on the cheekbones here in the nose like so this is the second one I did okay and here's the one I did today oh I love it all right I love it They're all cool. Look at this guy though. He looks like he looks like he's bronze, you know, that's that uh, what's it called when the bronze patines and goes that blue color. Or yeah, it's bronze, I think it does it, or copper that does that. But look how that blue really pops in there. There's those bug holes. that green in there guys I love it let's see how I can get a full picture of it that's that's about it right there what do you guys think I'd love to read the comments so you know when you use the stain when you use the dye wait for the wood to dry because you guys gotta remember <clears throat> excuse me when wood when wood gets wet it darkens up right so just wait I used the uh, 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 draw, uh, blow dryer thing to uh, dry the dry it quicker. The sucker's dry, and you know what? Tomorrow will be tomorrow morning when it, when I wake up, it will be even brighter because the wood will be even more dry. But look at the colors in here. Love it. Love it. This hair turned out pretty good too. Kind of Albert Einstein, spirit of the ocean. I call this guy. Spirit of the Ocean. Stop. <laughs>